I can say without a doubt that that was one of the hardest days as an engineer that I've ever had. On May 19th, 2020, heavy rains began falling on mid-Michigan, leading to infrastructure failures across five counties. Water levels across the region continued to rise, closing roads and bridges in several communities. While hundreds of households and businesses were evacuated during this historic 500-year flood. Our emergency responders were working with the 911 dispatch agencies and the emergency operations centers. They were relaying the information back to me. I was relaying it to the State Emergency Operations Center and MDOT's upper management of all the road closures that were taking place and working with other um, law enforcement, fire, and EMS to notify them of road closures. Governor Gretchen Whitmer declared a state of emergency to help communities in need. Once floodwaters started to recede, work to restore mobility to the heavily damaged transportation system immediately began. We went from site to site assessing everything and starting to formulate a game plan in our heads about what's priority one, what's priority two, and just kind of approaching it from that, from that aspect. MDOT began using the emergency bid letting process to secure contractors who would quickly start repairs to reopen damaged roadways, starting with US-10 at Sanford Lake. Right after they were got the contract, they were moving equipment in and starting work, which was Memorial Day holiday, and they worked through the holiday non-stop to get US-10 back into service where we could open that back to traffic. Two weeks after the flood, MDOT was able to reopen one lane in each direction of US-10 at Sanford Lake. By mid-June, all lanes of traffic were open and staff had moved on to the next emergency contract, debris removal at two locations in Midland and Gladwin counties. I have never seen that much debris and that much total destruction. And then to take another bridge on the north side of that bridge and basically just undermine everything and collapse it right in the hole. One of the most challenging detours, traveling on foot across a mostly dry riverbed. Matt and Rachel Miner, along with their four children, were forced to do this after their home became landlocked by multiple bridge closures. Well, the first two months, we had no way to get to the house except by kayak or walking across the riverbed. So we literally had to buy mud boots for us and the four kids and take turns with groceries walking across. It was about a quarter mile. With more road access suddenly re-established, homeowners would have access to emergency services again and some normalcy back in their lives. For the miners, I think it couldn't have come at a better time because 45 minutes just to get get around the detour, it's just 45 minutes too long for an emergency vehicle. In December, Crews broke ground on a temporary replacement bridge over the Tobacco River, replacing the one washed away in May. The communities of Edenville and Tobacco Townships celebrated the completion of the work by walking the bridge shortly before opening it to traffic in March. So thankful to them and you know we would hear them all hours of the night and it just meant so much that there's people out there helping us to get back to something that we used to take for granted. What impressed me the most was how resilient our staff is and how um, resilient our communities are. I will say that this was uh, one of the most rewarding moments, if not the most rewarding moment of my career uh, because of the, um, the amount of benefit to the public. 